Hey up everybody, uh, I'm moving on to another project now and I'm going to make uh, myself a, a, a different mechanical hacksaw. Uh, I made this one approximately going on for 20 years back now and it served me well. However, it's got a couple of disadvantages for me at the moment. Uh, the main one being it measures 3 foot plus to, to the, uh, for the length. And when it's on its full stroke, it's even it's even longer at three foot six or three foot eight. It's a bit too long for my workshop this one at the moment. So uh, the other disadvantage is it takes a full sized length axle blade, and I'm only cutting basically two inch material. So the new one I'm making is only going to use half a blade, so I can get twice as much use out of my blades. And it will be more compact, it'll only be 20 inch long roughly, where my hand is now, so it'll fit neatly under the bench. So I can hear what everybody's saying I think, why would you want to make a mechanical hacksaw when it's old technology? Well, you know, quite a few reasons in my case, I like old technology. And uh, I like to make things myself if I can possibly do it. Also, I don't really want to chop saw with a cutting disc in because it's going to send grinding dust and sparks all over my workshop and I've got all my, my equipment in here that I don't want to get damaged and it would mean covering everything up all the time. As for a, a metal cutting bandsaw I don't think I could probably get one smaller than this anyway so I, I'd, been, I'd, I'd not be gaining anything so I'm going to loosely base this on the uh, Kennedy Hexacut did one in 50s and 60s I think. Uh, I've seen a few pictures of, of, one, of one of these and I want to loosely base it on one of them. There is some slight variations. Uh, why don't I buy one then? Because when they do come up they command uh, quite a high price for what they are I think. And to get a uh, one that wants renovating, well, if I'm going to renovate one, I might as well just as well make one from scratch. And also, I'm going to make a few modi modifications to that design. I'm going to try and put a little gearbox on it, so that uh, I can have two or three speeds. You see, a lot of these have been made on YouTube, and they're all... They all basically work the same, it's just the construction may be slightly different on the materials and how they're constructed. Well they're all basically the same, it's a motor driving a pulley which drives a crank which drives the forward and backward motion and that's all, all, all it is, that's all there is to it. I've made a, a full size sketch over on the other workbench and uh, I'll show you that in a minute. I've not got no other drawings, uh, basically it's all going to be up here in my head and I'm just playing it by ear as I go along. I'm just going to stick to that outline design and uh, play it by ear. Okay, there's me, me sketching, me drawing. I made a, a rough sketch there initially, then I've drawn it out in full scale. So it's going to be 20 inch long. Loosely based on a hexacut saw that's nice and compact. You've got your main body with your fixed jaw which incorporates the uh, pivot points. Then you've got your slidey, sliding guide arm, your slider arm on the top. Then that's got, got in, incorporated into it the saw frame with the blade. Then you've got your crank arm that powers the saw and your motor and a pulley at the back. But I'm also going to try and uh, incorporate a, a, a little gearbox to get, give me two or three speeds. So that's going to be different from the hexacut one. And I've had a rummage through my recycled items and my donated items and my off cuts of metal. Found some pulleys and, some, and a belt. I've also got some bits of tubing, angle and plate that I'll be using and I've also got the, that Westinghouse motor made in USA it's a 220 volt 
half horsepower motor. I don't think you need half horsepower, I think you get away with a quarter or a third. Uh, but it's single phase and it's made in USA 14.25 refs per minute. I've also got this hexagonal bar which is similar to what the hexicut hexi saw is made from. You don't have to use hexagonal bar but being I've got some I'm going to use it. You could use square tubing or square bar. With square it'll be running in a 45 degree angle. Uh, I've also got these ML10, Myford ML10 change wheels. I've got a selection of them from a previous lathe that I had that were duplicated when I let the lathe go. So I might try and make my gearbox out of them. You might also say why don't I use a VFD drive and a three phase motor. Well by the time I've bought one of those drives and a, and a new motor for three phase I'm defeating the object, I might as well just go and buy a saw. So I'm going to be using the items that I've got through this gearbox. What I'm going to do first then, I'm going to make this main body part for the fixed fixed jaw and the the body that houses all the pivot points for the for the gearbox and the pulleys and the um, guide arm that goes over the top. I'm going to make a start on them and then we'll reconvene. Right I've got the main body fabricated now and all it is is a piece of 2 inch square tubing or 50 mil, a piece of 3 by 3 by quarter angle I've, and I've welded it onto this angle at the predetermined angle from my drawer in here. And that's going to be my main, my main body piece from where everything pivots. And then the vice will fit on the front here. So all I've got to do next then to this is just round this edge off, bore it out or drill it or ream it, whichever I don't know yet, for the, um, for the spindle for one of the gears another hole in for the other gear which will then fit onto the pulley which will then go back to the motor so that's what I'm going to do next and I'm going to get all this machined up and then take it from there